Welcome to Moments with Marianne. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very inspiring and powerful guest coming right up, and he's none other than Justin Osman. So Justin's here today to talk to us about his book, Hearing With My Heart. Justin has led an extraordinary life and found himself learning vital lessons from his unique circumstances early on. Growing up with 90% hearing loss is hard for anybody, but imagine being the son of Meryl Osmond, the lead singer of the world-renowned Osmond family, making deafness even a bigger challenge for him. After 12 years of intensive speech and listening therapy, Justin can now speak with passion and through modern-day technology, hear with conviction. Considering the fact that he was a couple years behind his peers, he has shown intense dedication, mental toughness, and physical assertion that nothing can stop him from going after his dreams. Having shared the spotlight with the likes of Kevin Costner, Oprah, Billy Crystal, Garth Brooks, Susan Boyle, and many other distinguished and respectable individuals, Justin's unique style inspires and motivates audiences. On that note, it's my great pleasure to introduce Justin Osmond to the show. So welcome to the show, Justin. Thank you, Marianne. It's an honor to be on the show with you and and to be able to uh, help inspire and and to be able to uh, exchange some great thoughts and ideas. And so thank you. Good to be on the show with you. Oh, what a joy it is to have you here. I mean, I I heard your story and been listening to the um, different speeches that you've given and, you know, your book as well. And I am just, man, what a heartfelt story. What an amazing individual you are. You're such an inspiration to so many people. Oh, uh, thank you, Marianne. I, I try to, you know, try to make a difference and, and to help where I can and, you know, someone gave me a chance. Someone gave me an opportunity to be able to hear with conviction, to be able to speak with passion, despite my profound hearing loss. And, and so this is just my little way, my small way of paying it forward and, and try to help uh, provide a little bit of hope for those that, that may be struggling along, along the way. And, and uh, so thank you. I, I hope this book can uh, hopefully give a little bit of hope or a little bit of encouragement and uh, support and motivation or whatever that is uh, that people may, may be looking for, for whatever particular challenge that they may be facing. Well, and I'm going to touch on this briefly. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this one portion because in your own right, you're just such a remarkable individual. Your, your dad's Merrill Osmond. He's the lead singer of the Osmonds, and that's why if people see this name, they're probably like, oh, I recognize that name. <laughs> you know? And I, I remember the Osmonds growing up, so I'm like, hey, that's great. And so, but the family got started, you know, in the sh- in show business, and it's, I thought it would be a great story to share because of hearing loss. You're, you're right, Marianne. It's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, a lot of people don't know this about uh, the Osman family. I mean, they know that the entertainers and songwriters and, you know, been in the entertainment uh, industry. But what the thing that a lot of people don't know is how the Osman really got started in show business. And if it's okay, I, I, let me just share real quickly the story. Uh, mm-hmm. My grandmother, uh, Olive Osman, the matriarch of our family, her two oldest boys, were both born with a very severe, profound hearing loss. And her doctor at, uh, at that time told her not to have any more children because he said that the, all the children would have a hearing loss. <laughs> and oh, my goodness. Thank goodness. I know. Thank goodness, you know, my grandmother didn't listen, and she had seven more children, and, uh, of course, nine children altogether. But it goes on, and... You know, they lived on a small little dairy farm up in Ogden, Utah. And as you know, hearing aids are not um, um, very cheap. They're pretty pretty expensive. And they did not have any money to buy uh, good hearing devices for their two deaf brothers. So what they did is they, they started 
singing and started doing barbershop music at a very young age. And this is, this is my dad, this is Alan Wayne, my dad, and Jay. And they went out and they started performing and singing in little county fairs there and there to raise money so that they could buy and purchase a new set of hearing aids for their two deaf brothers. And that's really, really why or how the, uh, the Osborne brothers uh, got started and uh, to help raise money for the two deaf brothers. And then to take the, the story even a little bit further, my grandmother, uh, Olive, she started a charity called the Osborne Foundation, and that was primarily set up to help the two deaf boys who were never part of the musical group because they couldn't hear and to provide resources and, and uh, material and content to help uh, not only the two deaf boys, but other deaf children out there. And then this charity, the Eisman Foundation, grew and it grew, and it's now known today as the Children's Miracle Network, uh, the CMN Hospital that you might have heard. And oh, yeah. so my grandpa, so and that's, mm-hmm. that's how that came about. But that's how the Eisman family got started, was, was they started singing and performing to raise money to provide hearing aids, for the two deaf brothers. Isn't that cool? It's such a great story of, you know, how it's such a, an amazing um, and such talented people got uh, came together, they saw an issue, and they're like, hey, we can fix this, you know? <laughs> it's what family does, you know? Yeah, well, thank you. You're right. Every every family has their, their challenges, you know, and our family, we're, we're not exempt. Uh, from that, and, but we stick together, and uh, we're all about family and and uh, staying together and and putting putting each other's lives uh, first and just being there for each other, you know. Yeah, well, and you know, I just think it's so amazing. So you grew up with ninety percent hearing loss, but that hasn't slowed you down one bit. I mean, you're probably one of the most highly educated individuals out there and you also are a musician in your own right <laughs> well sometimes i wonder what my iq is <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I, I i think it's pretty high <laughs> oh thank you that's that's very kind of you you know just just a little background on myself when i, I was born like you said with a p- profound hearing loss 90 percent hearing loss uh, but they, I wasn't diagnosed, or they didn't find out that I had a, a, a very significant hearing loss until I was almost two years old. So if you can just imagine, for almost two years, I lived in a world void of sound. No music, no sound, no no nothing. And for me, I thought that was normal. I thought that was just part of my life. And then all of a sudden, one day, I was out in the backyard playing with my, with my brothers, and my mom comes out, and and said, all right, guys, come on in. It's time for lunch. And both my brothers turned and, and went. And I just kept playing in the sandbox, playing with my with my little tractor. And I never responded. And that's when my mom realized that there was something wrong with my hearing. Because back in that day, they didn't have the newborn uh, screening like we have today. Yeah. So, so to think about it, for two years, uh, that basically I'm two years behind my my peers. And so my parents, bless their hearts, they put me in an intense speech therapy, listening therapy, comprehension therapy uh, to help try to catch up with all my peers. And so I did a lot of reading, and, and you might you might even recognize my voice. I, I do have somewhat of a deaf accent. Uh, I used to, it was so hard for me growing up with that. But you know what? It, it's who I am. It's part of who I am. It's my signature. It's my brand. You know, I don't I don't need to sound like Justin Timberlake or Justin Bieber. I want to sound like Justin Oisman. That's that's me. You know, that's who I am. I may not have a voice like my dad or have the golden throat like Donnie and Marie. But you know what? I work so hard to learn how to speak, learn how to talk and learn to hear and communicate and whatnot. And to be able to have a conversation like we are right now. And so again, someone helped me get to that to that point. And I still feel like I'm still catching up. <laughs> but <laughs> well, I, I think you're doing it is fabulous, and it, you're such an inspiration for people who are 
um, maybe have hearing loss and they're like, gosh, I, there's no hope. You know, I have some friends that their children are going through speech therapy and also friends that have um, hearing loss as well. And so it's it's something that affects a lot of people. Yes, it's so true. And, you know, sometimes you just have to you get you get knocked down, you get knocked out of the saddle, you've got to get back in, you've got to get back on and keep going. You've got to have that persistence, that resilience. And my, my parents taught me a lot about that. And, for example, you, you mentioned that, you know, I got into music. And, you know, I even though I don't have quite have that golden throat like my family does and when it comes to singing, I've always been intrigued by musical instruments, especially the violin. So I've always wanted to play the violin, but even though I had uh, professionals and even doctors tell me right in my face, that I could never play a musical instrument because of my profound hearing loss. Well, whenever someone tells me that I can't do something, man, that just ignites a fire within me like no other. <laughs> and I love like that. To them all. But one day, I'll never forget, um, I was I was practicing my violin uh, one morning, and I was struggling. I was really having a hard time trying to hear, get the right notes, and my intonation is just completely off. And I remember my brother in one room playing the piano, my other brother in the other room playing the cello. And here I am, I'm trying to concentrate and hear myself. I got so frustrated. I remember I turned my hearing aids off. And so that gets rid of, you know, me having to hear my siblings play their instruments. And I was completely quiet. And I tried, I, I, I experimented. And what I'm about to tell you absolutely changed my life. I put the violin next to my chin, underneath between my shoulder and my chin, and I started to play. And oh my goodness, I could not believe it. I could actually hear every note I was playing through the conductive vibration that sent the sound to my brain. And so I learned eventually how to play the violin and the viola, not by hearing it, but by feeling it. And so that's how I learned to play the violin. Uh, my goodness. So whenever, you know, I, I felt like I had every uh, excuse in the world uh, not to play a musical instrument. Hello, I'm, I'm deaf, I'm hard of hearing. But when you really want something bad enough to go out there and fight for it, to work day and night for it, and, and to give up time and sleep for it, I really believe that anybody and everybody can really truly achieve what you really truly are pa- uh, passionate about, and you can accomplish it. Well, and it you know it shows, and it's easy to see why so many companies have you as their keynote speaker, where you you come in and you talk to people about turning their weaknesses into strengths, and why you've mentored some of you know some of our top celebrities that we have. I mean, it's easy to see why you do that. <laughs> Well, I, I appreciate that. I, I I feel like I'm just an ordinary guy from an extraordinary family, <laughs> an extraordinary <laughs> background, if you will. But I believe that every one of us can be extraordinary in our own little way. You know, uh, just just because I come from a musical family uh, doesn't mean that that's my end. You know, I, I wanted to, mm-hmm. to kind of blaze my own trail. I wanted to be able to go out there and say, hey, I can do this, you know. I can I can create my own freedom uh, from fear and limitations that are set on, on me and to be able to help discover my own uh, strength, like you said. Um, I know we all have weaknesses, but I, I really believe that we can make them our own strength and, and our, some of our greatest blessings in life. And, and I know we all have, uh, we can create good habits, bad habits, I could go on and on about that, but the, the main thing is to truly be able to, to realize that we all have uh, value. We all have amazing uh, value uh, and worth to ourselves. Once we recognize that, uh, the, the sky is the limit. I, re- I remember, you know, I, I had a really hard time fitting in, self-identity, trying, self-acceptance, trying to feel included. I felt isolated and lonely. All that. I was bullied when I was a young kid. Um, I looked different. I had big hardware devices coming out of my ears and cords 
coming out of my ears and, and attached to my belt. And I kind of looked like a robot. I kind of stood out and people made fun of me. And it was really difficult. And I'm making myself very vulnerable as I say this. But I just want people to know that that you're not alone. And, it's, and in my case, it's not a lack of hearing. It's a lack of hope that people that people need. And, and other people, it's not a lack of a challenge that they may be going through. It's usually a lack of hope. But once you can restore that perfect brightness of hope in people's lives, that's where you can really truly get on your feet, get back in the saddle, and go after your, your greatest dreams and aspirations in life. Well, it's easy to see that you have blazed your own trail, and it's bright. Let me tell you, I mean, it's your your story, who it is uh, that you are as an individual. All of that is just, I think, really serves as hope for a lot of people that look at their own story and go, you know, I don't think I can do it. You know, I've got kids or what have you, and so you really help give a lot of hope to people who might otherwise go, gosh, I don't know how I'm going to make. May, you know how to even rise above all of this, you know, and I and I applaud you for that. I really think that you know um, your story is one that everyone should be familiar with, you know, without a doubt. Well, uh, thank you, Marianne. I I believe everybody has an amazing story. They really do, and you know, you just, I think it's, I love hearing other people's stories, and because it gives me the strength and the hope I need, and the courage to, to overcome my and, and to climb the mountain that we all need to climb. And I, mm-hmm. one thing I would love to share, is, and it's, it's really helped me to get to, o- over these hurdles, if you will, is it's my personal motto. I may have a hearing loss, but that hearing loss does not have me. And that applies to anybody with any particular challenge. They may have a particular challenge, but don't let that challenge have you. And just recently, it was just a complete surprise, but I was just diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And it was really hard for me to take because I live a very active lifestyle, and so that's why it was so difficult to accept. But but now I, I've added that to my, my model, and now I, have, I may have diabetes, but that diabetes does not have me. And I'm currently training for an Ironman. And that's not going to stop me from wanting to continue to go out there and reach my dreams and my aspirations in life. And so I have a joke in my family. Now, it's, I tell everybody that I have, I have ADD. I'm attention, <laughs> deaf, and diabetic. Oh, no. Uh, I had ADD as a kid, so. <laughs> but it was a different kind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny. oh my goodness well do you know and it, gosh okay so um and i can, we'll come back i wanted to talk to, about the um fun that you have but since you touched on all this running that you're doing let's let's start there first so not long ago you ran 250 miles in seven days to raise money for children who needed hearing aids. How how did this even come about? How did you decide, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go do this? <laughs> oh man, I tell you, um every time I think about it, I, I just I cannot I look back and I cannot believe I did that. I, I just I, I, who in their right mind would even do something like that, right? <laughs> That's like back to back to back marathons, you know? <laughs> so it is. It's, it's about 10 marathons back to back, and you're right, in seven days straight, so it, it was about 35 to 40 miles a day um, to get to get to that finish line. The hardest part was getting up every single morning, but really, how it all really got started, Marianne, was I was just running one morning, just running a, a normal one or two miles, and, I, and, you know, with the charity I have, I'm always trying to think of ways on how I can give back, how I can help other, help my deaf brothers and sisters out there, you know, who are maybe struggling out there. What can I do to help uh, with that? And so I just came back with this idea and this thought. I, I remember running into the house. I told my wife, oh, my goodness, and I would love to run across the whole state of Utah. What do you think about that? And always an awareness in the month of May, which is Better Hearing Month, and I could raise some money to help some deaf children. What do you think about that, sweetheart? And 
<laughs> only uh, did not approve. She was like, absolutely not. You will hurt yourself. And and I and I said, oh, come on, sweetheart. Just, let's just, I'll make a deal with you. I'll put together a 10-month training schedule. And in six months' time, if I'm looking good, I'm not hurt yet, and I haven't broken any tendons or anything like that, would you, would you consider? And she said, okay, I'll consider it. And so I, I couldn't even find a, a program online on the Internet. Uh, there were Ironman training schedules. There were ultra marathons, 100 milers. But I could never, I could not find a 250-mile training program. So I had to kind of create it on my own, and it was intense. I to slowly work my way up every single week. I was running in rain and hail and snow, um, but I was so focused. Oh, and by the way, I... I contacted Southern Utah uh, School District down there, and I told them what I was doing. And I said, do you have any children in your school that need some hearing help? And they said, yeah, we actually have 25 deaf children that need new hearing aids. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, that's perfect. I'll run 250 miles to help 25 deaf children, and I'll raise the money if I can to help every one of them if, if possible. So started the training program, started raising some awareness, um, and I didn't really want to be in the spotlight. I wanted the kids to be in the spotlight. It was all about them and their story. And, and um, anyway, it started this amazing journey. And I'll tell you, Marianne, without telling you the whole long version of it, I could tell you so many stories. But it was by far the most difficult, the most heart-wrenching uh, experience I have ever been through up to this point in my life. But on the other hand, it was one of the most rewarding, uh, self-fulfilling experiences I, I have ever experienced. And I was able to raise, thanks to all of my wonderful sponsors and donors and people that helped uh, contribute, we were able to raise enough money um, to help 25 uh, deaf children with brand new hearing aids. It was so cool. Uh, just walking or uh, running past that finish line, was probably one of the most amazing experiences of my life. But remind me to never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I used to run cross country, but 250 miles, my goodness, that's quite that's quite a feat. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, and so, you know, so you did this. Was this part of, because I know you founded the Olive Osmond Hearing Fund. Was this part of... Uh, the fundraiser you, you did in conjunction with that, or was it separate? Yep, that's what it was. It was I ran um, uh, and I finished, and the way I set it up was I ran past the finish line on my grandmother's birthday. And so, yes, uh, Olive Eisman is, is my sweet grandmother, and we were very, very close uh, because, first of all, I was her favorite grandchild. <laughs> um, <but> also... <laughs> But also, I'm I'm the only one in the second generation of the Eisman family that was born with a hearing loss, and so that there was an immediate connection with my grandmother. Because remember, she started this charity called the Eisman Foundation to, to promote hearing health awareness for her two deaf boys. And so, even though that went on to become the Children's Miracle Network, uh, deep down inside, she had just a strong love and compassion for the deaf community. So when my sweet grandmother passed away, I, I started the charity in honor of my grandmother, uh, Olive Eisman, to help carry her dream and her legacy to continue to help the deaf uh, children around the world. And so, yes, this, this run, uh, I did it in honor of my grandmother, uh, in honor of the Olive Eisman Hearing Fund, and we were able to help uh, those 25 deaf kids. And so, yeah, that, that was that was part of the Olive Osmond Hearing Fund. So um, with the Olive Osmond Hearing Fund, what do you guys have coming up next? Let's say if someone's listening to this and they're like, gosh, I want to get involved. I want to donate. I, you know, I want to see more of this in my community. How can they um, connect um, with you with the Olive Osmond Hearing Fund? Thank you. Uh, great question. Um, one thing that we we do is we do we take in uh, salvage hearing aids. So, for example, let's say someone out there has a hearing aid that's maybe broken or up, 
the leak, uh, whatever the case may be, but they no longer need it, and people sometimes don't know what to do. They either throw them away or whatever, but we can take them. Uh, the Olive Oil and Hearing Fund will take any hearing aid, whether any brand, uh, any model, we'll take it, and and the donor will actually get a tax write-off. It will be considered a donation. Uh, we will give them a tax exempt thank you letters that they can use for the taxes, for the tax write-off. Uh, so, and then we take these hearing aids, and we basically recycle them. We can recondition them so that we can reuse them again to help other, other deaf children. So that's, that's a, a, a thing that we love doing. We can take these hearing aids and we'll definitely put them into good use and give them to somebody that could definitely use them. So that's, that's one thing that people can get involved. Uh, but our website, uh, hearingfund.org, you can go there and learn more about our programs, how they can get involved. Uh, every now and then we, we go on a hearing humanitarian mission. And mm-hmm. sometimes we, we partner with the, the Lions Club and the Starkey Hearing Foundation. We have some great partnerships out there. Uh, and the Older Pond Hearing Foundation, we partner with them as well. In fact, they helped me with my big run, with my 250-mile run. So uh, you can go to the website and see the lots of great opportunities to be able to participate. Mm. I, I just think that what you're doing is just amazing. I love the light that you're bringing to the world and, and just helping as many people as you can um, with hearing loss and, and also the inspiration that you bring to the rest of us ADDs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I, I need all the help I can get, too. So thank you for, for inspiring me and everybody that's listening to, on your show. So thank you. Oh, well, and um, so I know that companies, you know, major companies hire you, and I kind of want to touch on this again because I think these topics are just amazing. They hire you to come out and speak um, and deliver keynote speeches that, um, you know, really inspire their employees. What are some of the topics that you speak on? Good, good question. Um, so one of the things I'd love to talk about is, uh, freedom from our fears. We all have those fears, right? But I talk about how we can master those and how we can uh, disintegrate and overcome our fears from self-doubt and our limitations. I think we tend to do that to ourselves a lot, whether in the in the workforce, whether in our personal lives, whether in school and academics. Um, we need to be able to rise above that. So I can I can share stories and experiences about that and how we can do that. But I also talk a lot about how uh, there's a solution that we can discover our strengths. Sometimes we need to realize that we have incredible gifts and talents and skill sets that we all possess. It just needs to come out in the open. And, and how we can unleash, um, you know, the genius that, that's within us. Uh, sometimes we, so many people are labeled uh, with a particular sticker and, and, and it, 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 it basically limits ourselves from going out there and reaching our greatest dreams and our aspirations in life. I, I love to take people on a roller coaster ride uh, through highs and lows and, and through the emotions of fear and frustration and loss, and despair, to humor, even triumph and glory. I, I, I take people on a roller coaster ride and, and let them know that they're not alone and that we, instead of making life an, an intermission, you know, putting our life on hold and, and not trying to, to keep the past uh, holding us hostage, but to make life a mission and to be proactive and not to be reactive, uh, but to, to really go out there and make dust for our own life. And, and like you said, to blaze that trail in our own individual life because everybody has something that they can offer to make this world a better place to live. I talk a lot about how we can change our habits. Um, and how we can, you know, because motivation is what gets us started, but a good, strong, healthy habit that keeps us going. And then that creates and that turns into a, a lifestyle. Whether it's, it's a bad habit turns us into a, a bad lifestyle uh, or a good lifestyle. It all depends on those, those habits. But So it's not always motivation that gets you going, although those things help. But we have to create good, uh, not just habits, but also good uh, standards um, on that. And then, of course, 
um, just how we can overcome our challenges and our adversity and turn them into strength and our greatest blessing. Uh, but the key, though, really is to, to tell people that we all have challenges. There's nothing we can do about that. But the secret is to not let those challenges have us. Mm. Those are words to live by, without a doubt, you know, because it's easy, you know, to really kind of see the challenge and then go, gosh, this is so much, or, you know, whatever it could be. It could be poverty. It could be um, loss of hearing. It could be low self-esteem. Whatever it is, you know, whatever's going on with somebody, it could be um, – it's something that they can work through, and your story is quite an inspiration. And, again, like I said, it provides such a great deal of hope. Of hope. Now, if companies are looking to connect with you to hire you for one of these keynote speeches, where would they go? Well, I think the first place they should go is go to JustinOsmond.com. Just go to my website, uh, JustinOsmond.com. And all my information is in there, how to contact me, and would love to hear from them. Would love to come and uh, come to their corporate um, uh, event and be able to share um, my life story and then how we can apply it to their work setting uh, and how they can apply it with their employees and their everyday struggles. But, yes, would, would love to come and speak to anyone out there, uh, be able to, to, to come together and how we can collaborate our efforts and and make this a win-win for everybody involved and how we can take their particular mission statement, take it to another whole new level, et cetera. But, but yes, um, I invite you to go to JustinOsmond.com, and hopefully I'll see you at your next event. Well, and I think any company, especially the Fortune 500 companies, where they're looking to promote in a different way to reach all their employees. I mean, I've been parts of huge sales staffs before. Having speakers like you come in and talk really makes the difference between having a successful organization and having one where people are struggling. And so I can't stress high enough having you come out and speak on any of these topics and move you know, just move people forward and you know, allow them to gain hope again, get that inspiration, feel that confidence, and move forward. You know, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that you and Christy are now proud parents. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, oh yeah, it's <laughs> probably the most, oh, my goodness, uh, pride and joy of our lives. These two little girls, we've been trying to get our family started for quite some time. And that's another challenge that we've been facing. My sweetheart, bless her heart, has, has been through almost 15 uh, miscarriages. And so we went to the whole fertility route. Yeah. And nothing happened there. And so we, we did. We opened up to the, the idea of adoption. And oh my goodness, Marianne, it was one of the sweetest, most blissful, joyous, um, events of my life when we were able to, to adopt these two beautiful little girls. And I love being a dad. I've always wanted to be a dad. I want to be part of the dad club. And, and so, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. And, and that's another great story is, you know, for, for, for people out there that may not have struck and trying to get a family started, you know, we waited for a long, long time to get our family started. And, and just, just stay at it. Keep that hope burning alive. And I believe that there's always a way. When there's a will, there's always a way. And, of course, we, we give God the credit for letting that happen in our lives. Uh, so, yes, I, I am the proud dad of two beautiful little girls. So thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, it's interesting. You know, sometimes we make plans and God has something better in store for us. And it sounds like that's kind of what happened here with these two beautiful, you know, daughters of yours. And thank goodness you recently ran 250 miles because now you can keep up with them. <laughs> no, I, I cannot keep up with them. That's the thing. They have so much energy. They're, they're just 10 months old right now. And, man, they, they definitely keep me in shape. Uh, <laughs> well, that, I, I can't think of a, a better person. And these kids, these, these two lovely little girls are going to have such a head start in life having you and Christy as their parents. And I think that that's 
Um, so amazing. So it'll be, I'm just looking forward to hearing more of their story as well and how life progresses with, um, with everybody over there because I'm sure it's going to be a fun one. Uh, it is. It's, it's, uh, it's, this house used to be very quiet. It is no longer quiet. <laughs> uh, I, 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 unless I want to turn my hearing aids off, then I, then it's quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you kind of have the advantage there then, you know. <laughs> so, I do. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, that's, that's just, it's just amazing. You're just an amazing, your whole family is amazing. You and Christy and the girls and your extended family there. But, you know, thank you so much, Justin, for taking the time to be with us here today. Oh, my goodness. Marianne, like I said, it, it was my it was an honor to be with you on your show. So thank you uh, for all you do and the, all the, the lives you're touching and making a difference with. And so thank you. It was, it was great to be on the show with you, Marianne. It's been such a pleasure to spend this time with you today, Justin. I so greatly appreciate it. And of course, if anyone's looking to work with you, they can go visit justinosman.com to learn more about not only the speaking topics that you have for the corporate events that you do, but also about your book, Hearing With My Heart. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guests and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Mary Ann airs every Thursday, Friday, and Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmaryann.com for more information.